welcome to the Flute 360 podcast, where we incorporate a panoramic view of flute-related topics. I am your host, Heidi K. Begay, and this is episode 29, a journal entry. Today's episode is sponsored by J&K Productions. They produce all of my episodes from adding the intro and outro music to editing the audio and all post-production needs. Contact them for your next podcast project at jkproductions.media. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be with you here today, and I can't wait to share with you my weekly observations. To backtrack, about a month ago, I started Series 5 because I wanted to jot down pen and paper, per se, my ideas, thoughts, emotions, and observations for that particular week. And looking back in hindsight, I'm glad that I started this series with you all because I received this week some answers that I had about a month ago. So about a month ago, I shared with you all, I was really concerned about time management And it was more than just how do I fit in multiple jobs, running a house, being a sister, a wife, a daughter. It was more than that because I've done that before. It was on a much deeper level. I didn't know if it was because I was getting older that I was realizing how short our lives are and how precious our time really is. But it was that but it was so much more. And I found the answer in a very unexpected place. And it was while I was writing show notes for my husband's business. So one of the clients had a guest come on his show. And this particular show talks about software, computers, coding, programming, and developing. So the material and the content in which they are talking about goes way over my head. I don't know anything that they are discussing, but I do know how to type fast. And so that's why I'm hired. I just basically verbatim write down what they are talking about. But comprehending the content is a completely different level. Anyways, as they were talking about coding, this one guest, his name is Thomas, he was talking about time and my ears perked up a little bit and he said something so profound that I think it will last with me forever. He was talking about how the more experienced we get in our particular field, the more we want to be a sponge and learn more within our field and also more about life in general. So he said the more that the brain connects and makes these connections and your brain's on fire and it's lighting up, the more you want to get out of life, the more knowledge you want to soak up. And I just had this huge sigh of relief and I felt all of this weight come off my shoulders because Thomas said so well what I needed to hear. It was expressing my emotions to a T. It felt really good to have some black and white words, some tangible, I don't know, pieces of evidence or something to convey how I was feeling. And so that made me feel really relieved. So I wanted to share that with you. And it was in an unexpected place because it was me writing show notes for this coding software podcast company that is not my cup of tea. So I received a lesson out of that that I wanted to share with you. Put yourself in places that you normally wouldn't go. Experience things with people you normally wouldn't or go on an adventure with because that was something writing show notes was not my cup of tea. I just, I kind of had a bad attitude about it. I thought, why do I have to do this? This isn't music. Woe is me. And instead of looking at it 
in a positive light and thinking, oh, cool, what can I learn from this experience? I had a negative outlook and thank goodness, somewhere along the way, I was willing to adapt and tune into what I was hearing or I could have completely missed a really beautiful message that was being conveyed by Thomas and many other guests as well. So put yourself out there, do things that you normally wouldn't do and meet people that you normally wouldn't meet. Pick their brains, talk to them because you will be pleasantly surprised. And who knows, you can make some amazing connections to your art and to flute playing. So I just wanted to share that with you all. In addition to Thomas's lesson that I learned about time and skills and expertise, I want to share with you all some lessons that I'm learning through this show note writing gig. Lesson number one, keep learning and growing. The developers and the coders and the software, computer science engineers keep talking about how the way they progress in their career is they continually make mistakes. They are putting themselves out there and they swear by it. They say that, you know, you will learn and continue to grow within your field of expertise and They are constantly asking questions, picking people's brains, and their whole mantra is put yourself out there, go beyond the basics. So that's something we can easily see related to what we do as flutists and as musicians, okay? And one thing Thomas was talking about in the last interview was going beyond the basics. So once you have that really great foundation of whatever you're working at, so for us, it could be articulation or tone or vibrato, whatever the case may be. Once you have a good foundation of the basics, push yourself to understanding more advanced topics. Then in return, what Thomas was saying, it can encourage others to jump outside of their comfort box too. So of course, he's not talking about flute tone or flute articulation. He's talking about a program called Angular and then learning another program called JavaScript, etc. But the underlining message that I heard that I could relate to, I can't relate to computing codes and whatnot, but the underlining lesson I heard from that was Go past, you know, your comfort level of a vibrato speed of, I don't know, quarter note 60 and push yourself, you know, see how fast your vibrato can go with the not sounding goaty, of course. How loud can you go? You know, you think you're playing forte, try playing fortissimo. So going beyond the basics and really pushing yourself. The second lesson that I'm learning from these software developers is connect with people. They constantly are talking about meetups and the website meetup I've heard before, but I've never really checked out to see if there is a flute community meetup group. So I encourage you to start one in your area. I'm going to do the same for the DFW area in Texas. And at these meetups, you can learn from each other, connect and share ideas. The third lesson is contribute to your community. And I kind of talked about this actually in the newsletter with Christopher Caliendo about sharing your talents and giving back to your community. And so when I heard this, I just felt validated and I felt that It was really neat to hear uh, computer science guys uh, talking about the same life lessons and core values. So I think that was really neat. The fourth lesson I'm learning from these computer scientists is to have an open heart about criticism. Of course, us flutists have to go into lessons, hopefully with that mindset, so that way we don't get defensive when our teacher tells us 
how to fix something about our playing. As teachers, we need to, of course, give positive criticism to our students in a way that they will grow as a flutist, but at the same time, nurturing the person that they are. So that way we don't bring them down and discourage them. But having an open heart about criticism, they talked a lot about how people will give criticism. And sometimes there's a really bad or ugly tone to the criticism, but they encourage you to take away that attitude that might be there and look at the content to just see the content that is being conveyed and to take away the poor delivery if it was there. So of course we can apply that to what we do as teachers and students. And I thought that was very helpful. The fifth lesson that I'm learning from these guys is to make connections. And this goes back to the first lesson. I have been listening to these coders and a lot of these coders come from different fields. So one person, their first field was obtaining a PhD in physics. And she is a physicist teaching at a research institution. But then she decided she wanted to go into coding and into computer science. And as she was making her career change, she was talking about all the connections. She would say, oh, this was very similar to physics because of X, Y, and Z. And I saw the correlation and the parallels to coding. In a different interview, a completely different person who was first a poet of all things said, you know, he turned to coding and he really liked this program called Ruby on Rails, or he liked another program called Angular. And he talked about the languages and how Using language in poetry was very similar to language in programming. And I thought that was so fascinating because then a third person came on and said, oh, I was a professional chef and I was a carpenter. And in these fields, there were parallels and similarities to coding. And they all talked about those parallels and they showed how their brain made these connections from one field to another that you would think would not have any connection, but they showed that there were tons of connections. So that told me as a flutist and as an educator that life gives us these different opportunities to be a sponge and learn lessons from the day It could be in a grocery line at the supermarket. You can learn a lesson and apply it to teaching. Or you could listen to a bird chirping outside and hear the different fluctuations of the chirp and try to mimic that on the flute. I know that that's totally fluty of what I just did by saying, you know, matching a bird's chirp. But you get the idea. So make connections. Always be asking questions and see links of what you're doing day to day with your craft, which is you being a musician. So for me, what it boils down to all of these lessons that I'm talking about from uh, these coders and computer scientists is what it boils down to for me is whether you're a coder or a musician, a scientist or an artist, There are these underlining life lessons that we can take away from our specific craft. So to take it a step further, I think it's really neat that within our specialty in the music community, whether you are a flutist, a guitarist, a percussionist, a vocalist, a harpist, whatever the case may be, that we are just using these tools a flute, a guitar. This is our tool. And that tool is teaching us a life lesson. And to take it one step further outside the music bubble, you could use the tool of, I don't know, a hammer or a screwdriver, a wrench 
if you're a carpenter or a plumber, to use those tools to take away life lessons. So no matter our calling in life, these tools are given to us because we have a passion for them. And in return, they are teaching us life lessons that we need to gain and to understand from life. So I think that's fascinating. So all in all, to summarize this episode, I know it was a lot of me talking about coding and and whatnot, and I hope I didn't bore you, but to really boil it down even more, to me, it felt like here I'm listening to these computer scientists talk about the coding community. And so I translated that to my world and I took those five life lessons that I shared with you and I translated it to the flute community. But then I realized, oh my gosh, it's much bigger than the coder or the flute community. It's literally, it's talking about And we are experiencing this, each of us as individuals, is the human community and the human experience. We get to go through life together and help one another out and learn from each other. So making yourself available, giving yourself to your community, giving your talents and your time and your energy, I promise you will give you such a great return and send so much happiness your way. You will not only grow into your craft even more, but you will feel satisfaction in helping out another person. So my final suggestion for today is to listen and to read subjects that you wouldn't necessarily think are related to flute or to music. You might be quite surprised. And lastly, do things you normally wouldn't do. I mentioned this earlier. For example, this part-time job for me, the show note writing, I had a poor mindset at first. I thought, this is awful. Why me? It's not music. I was being so dramatic. But actually, I've learned a lot from this podcast and this process, and it has definitely helped me think differently than I was a few months ago. So always make connections and try things you normally wouldn't try. My two picks for this week, this is my new segment on the show, picks, and I have two picks this week. So the first is the Thomas interview that I mentioned earlier. I'll put the link in the show notes. Timestamp 21 and 41, he's talking about knowledge. And timestamp 2633, he's talking about going beyond the basics. So I will link that in my show notes. The second pick for this week is I have chosen for myself and my life at this point to take out refined sugar. I have decided that it has not served me well. (laughs) I have noticed that whenever I eat something that has refined sugar in it, I get horrible heart palpitations I have a headache and I feel super, super anxious and irritable. So this week I am taking out refined sugar. Wish me luck because I have such a sweet tooth. And I will let you know next week how those results turn out. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. And if you have any questions or suggestions, email me at HeidiKBigay at gmail.com. Thank you. Bye-bye. Today's episode is sponsored by J&K Productions. They produce all of my episodes from adding the intro and outro music to editing the audio and all post-production needs. Contact them for your next podcast project at jkproductions.media. Thank you for listening to the Flute 360 podcast. For more information, please visit HeidiKBegay.com. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review in the iTunes store. Let's talk about flute.